always say, this is my second favorite church to preach in. It has to be second because my own church is the first, right? <laughs> but I, I, uh, I'm so excited. I just blew in last night. But I want to congratulate uh, first Pastor Esther. Yeah, amen. Isn't she uh, just uh, uh, so blessed, so anointed to serve God? And I just heard that this morning, is that she's in charge of this. This, this is such a beautiful building. Uh, I feel privileged to preach with new carpet because I can smell it. Okay? <laughs> Praise the Lord. I also want to congratulate uh, Pastor Jeremy, too, um, you know, for, for, for what God is doing for his increase, his ministry. And I know that he's going to make a difference in the church. And lastly, I want to congratulate Pastor Gabriel because he's an angel now. He's an angel. <laughs> Lord, you be the message. 
You be the one that would open up hearts that they would receive, especially, Lord, their corporate mission Sunday, oh God. Lord, prepare their hearts for what they will do with their hands, with their hands, oh God. But Lord, let it be you, not because of me, Lord, but because of the Holy Spirit. So let me step aside so that the Holy Spirit will speak, inspire, and challenge each and every heart. I pray this in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 So I just want to welcome all the different locations as well. Um, I hope you appreciate every location yet, but like many of them. So I look forward to, to seeing uh, the CCK people tonight. Okay? Okay, well now, let's get right into this. I believe that today's passage can teach us something about the faith that we need to use when we're making a faith pledge. Because that's what it's called, a faith pledge. It's not a natural pledge. It's not using natural means to give money to the kingdom. It's using faith. And we have heard this teaching, but I'm hopefully I'm going to open up your eyes to something that maybe a lot of you have not seen before. Okay, in this passage I just read, what happened was that there was a boy that was demonized. His father was very concerned because the boy has seizures and he goes through all sorts of manifestations. And, 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 and then so what the father does is that the disciples are supposed to be the anointed ones. So he brings the, the son to the, to, to, to the disciples, but the disciples, they did their best, they prayed, but the boy still continued to be demonized. So then the father, feeling frustrated, brought the boy to Jesus. I mean, why not just go to the, the source, right? And uh, of course, they take Jesus any time at all. He cast out a demon. And so the disciples were wondering, well, well how, come it, how come you can do it so fast? You know, we, we couldn't do it. And, and so then Jesus um, gets into this. And so my, I've got three points for my sermon. The first point is that mustard seed faith is not small. Mustard seed faith is not small. Now, I need all of you, by faith, to say amen after I said I'm going to say it one more time because some of you are kind of going, huh? That's not what I've been taught. Okay, so I'm going to say it again. You need to by faith say amen. Mustard seed faith is not small. Amen. Okay. Let me tell you, verse 20 is one of the most mistranslated and mispreached verses in the Christian world. Okay? What you've heard in the past is, well, what Jesus said. Look, look, it's in the Bible here. If you have faith as small as a mustard seed. So, church, you don't need big faith. Because Jesus said it right here. You just need your mustard seed. It's the smallest seed. So all you need is a little itty bitty seed. And you can do big things because we worship a big God. It doesn't take a lot of faith on your part. Just a little bit. Because then the Holy Spirit can take and multiply it. God is a big God. And he can do great things with it. Because he says so right here. Look, the Bible says so. If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, then God will make it big. Let's look at some different translations behind this verse, okay? We've got the Amplified. We've got the Common English Bible. We've got the New American Standard Bible. We've got the New Revised Standard Version. In fact, let's look at that one, okay? Uh, all four uh, are pretty well the same thing. It, so, so the New Revised Standard Version, Jesus says, For truly I tell you, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed. Okay? So those have, that's how those translations said. So it seems to indicate that size matters. Okay? All you need is to have it, the size. Now, of course, mustard seed is small seed, so all you need is small. The size is small. Okay? According to those translations. Now if you look at the contemporary English version. Here it says, but I can promise you this, if you have faith no larger than a mustard seed, ooh, that really kind of backs up that theology, because the mustard seed is really small. So that means that your faith is even smaller, maybe half the size, a quarter size, one third, just small, no larger, okay? Because if you get too big, you don't trust God anymore. It's all about your faith and not God. It's easy, so, okay? Even the New Living Translation, which is, by the way, has become one of my favorite translations, to be honest. I'm a big NIV fan, okay, but, but lately, cause especially because I like I golf with John Bevere a lot, and, and that's his favorite translation, okay? And, and, and you know, he, he, he tells me that, oh, he has a Greek scholars are really good and all that. I know some of them and all that. I kind of got into him. And a lot of a lot of us I just like, but the NLT is translates, I tell you the truth. If you have faith even as small as a mustard seed, which is the same way that the NIV translates it, 
Okay? So these translations seem to indicate that the small size of a mustard seed is the key to my faith. Because you don't need much of it. Well, you know what? It's one thing to look at the English Bible, but we need to look at the Greek. And I think I mentioned this to you a few years ago that um, a few years ago, something that tra uh, really transformed me a lot in terms of my preaching was when I took a doctor level degree. Prior to that, I had already taken like three years of master's level degree, and you know, it's all great to me, right? You know, but when I took a doctor level degree, it really opened up my eyes because my professor was a professor of Greek for over 40 years. He was considered one of the top three Greek scholars in the world, and he really opened up my eyes. And those were one great I'm. I'm, I'm working on my dissertation now, okay, so I'm almost off the terrible wall. You're almost, don't call me that again. <laughs> but here, I want you to take a look at the Greek here, okay? I know it's on the screen. Okay, this is what the Greek says, okay? Now, there's a direct translation of the Greek, okay? So in, in, in yellow, you see the Greek words. If you have faith as a seed of mustard. You see that? Okay? Faith, piston, that's the Greek word. As, as, okay? As, but there's no small as. Is that in the Greek? There's no size. There's no word for size. Is that in the Greek? Yeah. In the Greek, it says, if you have faith equal or like a mustard seed. That's the, there's a big difference. It's not talking about size here. You see? Here it's talking about something else. Look, but that's in Terry. I've been taught otherwise. I've been taught that, you know, I mean, because, you know, this is the Bible saying that the mustard seed is the smallest seed, and, and, and is there somewhere in the Bible that talks about the seed being small, and, and, and that's what our faith ought to be like? Well, you know, you're probably referring to the parable of the mustard seed. Okay, it's going to be on the, on the screen too. In Mark 4, verse 30 to 32, he reads here. Again, he said, Jesus, what shall we say the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable shall we use to describe it? It is like a mustard seed. You ever say mustard seed? Which is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Okay, so Jesus did say that. He said a mustard seed is the smallest. Okay? Yet when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants with such big branches that the bird can perch in its shade. So, here's it. here it is. Small seed can grow really big. Is that what faith is? Um, the parable here is not about faith. This parable is about the kingdom of God. See, there's a difference here. Don't, don't mix the two together. Jesus is teaching on one hand about faith as a mustard seed, not as small as a mustard seed, not as size of a mustard seed, not no larger mustard seed. He's not saying that. Over here, he's talking about the kingdom of God, that the kingdom of God is also like mustard seed. See, mustard seed is used as a metaphor for two different things. One for faith, one for the kingdom of God. For the kingdom of God, it starts up small, then it gets big. That's what it's saying. It's so big that it's like a tree. Birds can perch on it. And it's the same thing with church planting. When you plant a church, you don't have a thousand member church right off the bat. Right? Now, if BFC has done that, please teach me how to do that. Okay? Like, you should be a thousand people here at all church. That's behavioral. I saw six people. I counted. Okay? Start small. But if they keep at it, the kingdom of God through them will become so big that birds can even perch on because the tree's not big. Not these little whippy little, you know, one branch type tree. Stop talking about it. Big, that's the kingdom of God. That's how it's talking about the seed. Starting off small, they get big. Because the kingdom starts small, they get big. But getting back, uh, uh, getting back to, to um, what Jesus is saying here, it, it's almost like no, but, you know, your faith doesn't have to be very big. Size doesn't really matter, because all that matters is that God is behind that faith. Okay? Let me tell you, size does matter. Otherwise, it will contradict with what Jesus, how Jesus responded to the disciples' question. Remember, at the beginning, when we were reading it, the disciples, how can we couldn't cast a demon? Jesus says, because you have little faith. Remember he said that? So, if he said, because you have little faith, and then he goes on, and says, what you need is faith as small as a mustard seed. <laughs> Boy, Jesus. You may be a good preacher, but you're not very logical. It's 
like, on one hand, he said we couldn't handle the demon because they had no faith, and now he said that uh, we have faith as small as a special seed, and one translation, no larger than a seed, maybe half. Look, which one do you, which one do you want? What do you, what, what, which is it? You know why? It's not a contradiction, because the English translations are wrong. Oh, no. I'm <laughs> This word, there are no errors in it, the original word. But you see, since the original word, see the Old Testament in, in, in Hebrew and Aramaic, and then the, the, the New Testament in Greek, that's the original word. But then, how many of you know Greek? How many of you know Hebrew? How many of you know Aramaic? All three? No hands. So in order for us to understand the Bible, we have to have translators who put it into English for us. It's English for you. English for you, right? But the problem is that the now comes this error. Is wrong. Man is translating. No translation is inspired. Oh man, that's true. You're saying that he's a buddy right now. But what, that's the truth. The original word is inspired. Yeah. But every English translation, you, you gotta be careful because if you yes. see there's no one one complete English translation that covers it all. Each translation is written for a different purpose. See, like, like you've got the, the word for word translation, the King James, the New King James, right? Trying to translate every word. But we do that, it's hard to kind of read. It's like trying to translate every word into Chinese or Chinese into English, right? Do word for word. You're all kind of, oh man, grammar's so weird here, right? So then what happens? Then you have the phrase by phrase translation, like the NIV, like the NLT. Then you get the phrase, but then by doing that, you miss all certain words. Right? You can hear that when you get translation during the service. And then you got the other kind of translation, the real the paraphrase. You know, it's like the, the, the Living Bible, the Message Bible, okay, and they, they really took a little, little liberty. But that's because, you know, for being Christian, for children, so that they don't get mixed up with all those long theological words, you know, it's a simpler translation. So it depends on the purpose. Okay, you, you understand what I'm trying to say here? But no translation is inspired. That's why God would have written it in English for us. Make sense? So we need to get back into the original. The yeah. original, Jesus did not say that your faith has to be as small as a mustard seed. In fact, to cast out a demon, you can't have small faith. Because the disciples tried it. And on that occasion, they did have a little faith. And they tried it, but just again, come out, come out, in the name of Jesus, come out. <laughs> and the demon, hey, I'm not coming out. That ain't getting me out of this body. I can imagine the, 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 the team just laughing at it. And that's why the, when the disciples came to Jesus and, and said, what, 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 what do you know wrong? You have little faith. Oh, that's what the demon said to you. Well, you're right. You need to build it up. So then he said, you need to have faith as a mustard seed. See, it doesn't make sense. If you only have a little faith, that means that you have a lot of unbelief. Think about that. Okay, because... A, 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 uh, what translation is it? Uh, the, the, the King James, right? uh, the New King James. The New King James actually says that you have unbelief. Okay, when the disciples ask, you know, uh, Nick and Nick said you have little faith. The, the King James says that you have unbelief. And then he goes into saying that you have a faith as must see. Okay? So, in other words, if you have little faith, it means you have a lot of unbelief. Now, think about that for a second. Somebody comes up to you for healing. <laughs> I'm really sick. Will you, will you pray for me? I'm not sure I'll pray for you, but oh man, I don't really believe it's gonna work. But you know, but I got a little faith. I, I know this one person in the Bible, first Peter 2 24, by his Christ, see you or something. Yeah, okay, uh, but, but, but I got a little faith. Because the Bible said that if I have you know, a faith as small as a bunch of seed, okay, that's what I got. Right, right. I got a lot of belief. I, I see some people die. I see some people like cancer. And then, and then, but don't worry about unbelief. I'm just gonna pray with you a little faith because it should work. Does that even make sense? Or what if you have a lot of fear and a little faith? Because that's another reversal of faith, right? If you have a lot of faith, you have a little unbelief. If you have a lot of faith, you have no fear. But what if you only have a little faith? That means you have lots of fear. No wonder Peter, at the beginning, had lots of faith. Hey, can I, can I get out of the boat and walk, walk towards you? Sure, lots of faith, because you see Jesus do it. Oh, this is good, this is good, this is good. Then the circumstances. Oh man, oh man, what am I doing here? Go there, Jesus. <laughs> Lots of fear, but then he's gonna have some faith. Sure, he can still see Jesus. Yeah. But but see, does that work? Got lots of fear and a little faith? 
you know, and all that stuff. I get to watch from here or, or Earth. Does this make sense? How can you just have a, a little faith? That's why Peter said. That's why Jesus didn't do mighty works in that earth except heal a few sick folks. Because there's so much unbelief in that city. A little faith. And he says he could not, that would not, could not, even the Son of God could not work through little faith. How can the English translation be right? Well, thank God you're going, oh man, do I throw out all my Bibles? No, 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 no. <laughs> Hallelujah. For this verse, the New King James Version, the King James Version, the English Standard Version, the Revised Standard Version have it right. Okay, here it is. You can't get person. I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, not as small, not no larger, no. You know, it reminds me of um, a few years ago, my, um, my wife and I had to move houses. We were living on one side of the island of Oahu. That's the island where Honolulu is. Not Maui. A lot of people think that, that Waikiki and Honolulu is on Maui. That's a popular idea. I'm Oahu. Now we're in another island. Okay? And so we're on one, one, one side, one end of the island. And then our kids had to do schools because the principal called us in and said that, um, see, when we first wrote our kids, when we used to wipe half the count of the Assembly of God, um, uh, we wrote our kids into preschool and kindergarten and all that. And the school only had up to eighth grade. But the principal promised me that there was going to be up to 12th grade by the time that my oldest son would get there. So we, we believed in him. Well, he called us in when he was in fifth grade and said, um, Mr. Wong, Mrs. Wong, uh, 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 sorry, we're going to miss it by one year. Okay, so your son can't graduate here, but your daughter can. <laughs> I don't know if your daughter graduated here and my son another. Okay? And so, so we looked for another private school that was comparable, and this happens to be on the other side of the island. So then we calculate the transportation, and, and we think, because we don't have an MRT system. We're building something, okay, but it's still pretty much there. And so I calculate that it would drop, it would, it would take me one hour to drive my kid to school and then to come back again. Then I would go to church. Then when I have to pick them up, I would drive another hour and then come back in an hour. Four hours! <laughs> now, I used to live in the San Francisco Bay area. I drove a lot then. The most I ever drove in one day, like three hours. I can't imagine driving four hours in tiny Hawaii. <laughs> didn't sense to me. So that's why we decided that we're going to buy a new house. So we put our current house on sale, and at that time, we had our mission Sunday as well, our mission conference. And so my wife and I, we always, every year, we try to increase our faith pledge a little bit every year so that we can grow in faith with, with everybody and all that. Well, um, so we, we, we wrote up an amount that was just a little bit more than what we gave the year before. We put the house on sale. No tears. And, and I remember the real estate agent told us that what's really important is the first 39 days, 90 max, 30 days, is that it has to be a kid because it goes on record. You see, once you miss that, people think what's wrong with the house. Or what about the greedy owners? They price it too high, all that stuff. And so it's not a good situation, but you know what? We couldn't sell the house for a year. And so we couldn't move for a year. So we actually ended up living with somebody in the other side of the island, and, we're, and on weekends we would come back in our own house and go back and forth, and it was just a mess. So then Mission Conference came around again, and God really convicted both my wife and me. I said that, you know why there was little results? Because we had a few people to check out the house. You gave little. You had little faith in me. You need to exercise big faith. Big faith gets translated in how many zeros are in your faith pledge card. So you pledge your faith, I will do something big for you. And both of us heard that separately. So we talked about it before we actually, because you know, in our church we believe that marriage couple, you can talk about it. You don't want that to be the split in your marriage. Okay? You talk about it, you, you, you pray to God, you, you come together, and then you agree. And so we, we said, oh, yeah, we have to. And we're saying, we don't have that much money, but that's why he's faith. You know, because we have the money, it's a natural pledge. But we give something that we don't have is faith. But we don't want to just give a little faith, we want to give big faith. So we were like the biggest faith promise that we've ever written. And we've been good for years. I mean, it was 
pretty big. It was scary big. You know what I'm trying to say? Crazy big. So he decided to kind of prove God that faith does work. So we wrote, put it in. That mission conference had Pastor Jack Haynes, who was my mission conference leader, among six other speakers too. But he likes to golf. So the next thing we went golfing, okay? I was killing him. I mean, I was so far ahead of him. And then we're at the ninth hole. We got way ahead of him. I get a phone call. And he goes, Terry, come on, turn off the phone. We're playing golf. It's like your day off this morning. Okay? It's your day off. I said, no, I have to keep it on my wife made me promise. I said, how come? Because the real estate agent could call. I said, you haven't sold the house for a year. Why would anything happen? Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so then, uh, it was boring, so I answered. It's my real estate agent. I said, Mr. Wong, you just got an offer. I said, what was it? It was humongous. Like, it is really big. And at the same time, you know the house that you're trying to buy? It dropped. <laughs> big. So big offer. So like sell big, sell high, and buy low. That's economic one on That's it. You can't have a And that's exactly what happened. And Jack Haynes, he, I told him what happened that morning. He said, Brother, did you just write a big faith play, pledge? I said, the biggest ever. My wife and I have done that for kids. I can see that expression on your face. See, you can outgive God. You cannot. Because think, just when you think that you outgive God, God gives back more. And let me tell you. Okay, I know that Israelita is in one of the locations. Okay, you don't set, tell to anybody in my church about this. Confidential. Okay, what do you guys think about this? Because of what happened, my wife and I own a million dollar house overseeing Pearl Harbor and it's all mortgage free. Wow. Let me want to give the Lord a clap off for that. I, I don't have any mortgage. I don't have any loans. My wife and I are debt free. We've been debt free for years now. And why? It's the faith promise. Faith promise. You see? Because it takes faith as a mustard seed. Not little. Not just, well, let me just increment by a few dollars. That's good to And that ain't gonna cast any demons out of any mission activities. <laughs> but when you can faith promise big, hallelujah, see what God will do. And I'm a living testimony of it. Like it's nice, I'm telling you, every month, not to have to write a mortgage check. Because I fear God and God delivered. And you know what? God is no respecter of persons. If he can do that for Terry Wong, he can do that for anyone here in Singapore. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Point number two. Point number one. The mustard, mustard seed faith is not small. Point number two. Mustard seed faith is robust. Mustard seed faith is robust. Okay. One of the characteristics of mustard seed, a mustard seed is that it's small. That what used for the kingdom of God analogy. Okay? But for the faith, that's not the one that Jesus is talking about. In the Greek, we saw it. Logically, we see it. One of the characteristics of a mustard seed is that it's robust. A mustard seed plants anywhere. It grows anywhere. It survives anywhere. It can be in cold weather. It can be in hot weather. And it will still grow. You can plant it in the worst of ground, and it will grow. A mustard seed will push aside obstacles by its growth. A mustard seed never gives up, it is relentless, and that's the kind of faith Jesus wants us to have. Amen. That's the characteristic of a mustard seed that he's saying, I want you to have the faith as a mustard seed. It's robustness that is tough. It will not give up. So you can be the valley, you can be sick, you can be financially struck, but mustard seed faith will heal. Mustard seed faith will save. Mustard seed faith will church plant. We'll work in the church. Mustard seed faith will work across the street. Mustard seed faith will work across the ocean. Hallelujah. Mustard seed faith will work in China. We'll work in Africa. We'll work in Singapore. We'll work all over the world. Mustard seed faith. Because it's relentless. It's tough. It's one tough little seed. And Jesus wants you to have the kind of faith that's tough. Hallelujah. 
Jesus is saying that regardless of what missions ground that you're in, hear this. Some of you have had some, some trials on the missions field. Some of you have had some trials with witnessing to unsaved loved ones. Some of you have, have been blasted, laughed at, persecuted by co-workers, co-students, fellow students. Regardless of what your mission's ground that you're in, if you have mustard seed faith that's robust, your giving and going are going to be growing. That's a rhyme. People laugh at that. <laughs> giving and going will be growing. See, mustard seed faith pledge, a mustard seed pledge will work in any economy because it's robust. It will do whatever it takes to grow. Whatever amount. You didn't have to think. I mean, I thought it was fantastic that Pastor Gabriel would, would have these three China teams. I mean, just think about that. Because we, we planted, Calvary and Sunday Gospel planted over 200 churches in China ourselves. What I think I have not done is paint those members, those people that got saved and formed a team to go to Africa. Like that, that's just phenomenal. That's because of mustard seed faith. You see, that even in a land of persecution, communism, this is what this does. When you write on this card, it is doing something good. Even when the ground is not good, even when you think, well, the economy's not that good. You know, the, the exchange rate is terrible. So I don't invest too much this year because, what, the single poor dollar age is not very good. And so maybe I should wait till next year when, when it's equal to an American dollar. Man, you'll be waiting forever, okay? It hasn't happened, okay? It's not going to happen. You just believe that your faith pledge, the faith is mustard seed pledge, so that it will grow no matter where it goes, what country is invested in, what missionary is supporting. Amen. I think about one, one couple in my church, a fantastic couple. They really have a mission heart. They, they go on so many mission trips. And when it comes to our mission conference every year, they take their mission faith pledge and they write down some almost obscene number. I mean, it's incredible. One year, they pledge $6,000 a month. $6,000 a month. And neither one of them are millionaires. They, 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 they have some businesses. And I know there's commission and all that. But still, the commission's not that high. And I remember one time, I, 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 in fact, it was last year. Last year, I, I took a car and I went up to the husband and I said, Are you sure that you want to do this? Because right now, the economy is kind of struggling in this area of your business. 